Hi guys, this is Tana from Proverbial Homemaker. And a while ago, I did a video about our curriculum choices for the year, and I mentioned the science curriculum we were using, and somebody commented and said, you know, I watched your homeschool summits chat about how you do a biblical worldview of science in your homeschool, like the practical tips, and you mentioned a certain um, book that you used for the younger ages specifically, that was about science experiments and could you just give a walkthrough? And so I promised I would, and it's been a while because <laughs> for lots of reasons, I was at a conference at the time doing a homeschool conference here in Oregon and then uh, our family got sick and then we went on vacation and then I had my personal prayer retreat for the year and just all sorts of stuff. And then I lost the book <laughs> and I found the book finally right where I left it on the bookshelf staring me in the face that I had just managed to miss this whole time. So anyway, all that to say, I'm sorry for the delay. I want to show you guys this book. This is just one of the resources we use, but it's one I particularly like. And so I just wanna show you how it works and give you some tips for how to use it. Now, this is what it's called. It's called 77 Fairly Safe Science Activities for Illustrating Bible Lessons. It's by D Donald B. DeYoung, okay? You can get it on Amazon. And, um, the reason why I liked it is for younger ages especially, like if you only have a couple, one or two kids or maybe three and they're all younger and you feel like all this pressure to get a formal science curriculum, unless you have some sort of state requirement that necessitates like a formal science curriculum, I just want to encourage you that you don't have to do that. You can put together your own stuff with Pinterest or just pull together resources or just do some delight directed learning and learn about whatever science related activity but if you're like me and you kind of need just a little bit of structure, just a little bit of a guide, but something that's flexible with ideas to pull from, then this book is a great solution. Because kids at that age, they don't really need a formal walkthrough of all these different subjects of um, science. That's just my opinion. Like there's plenty of time for that in later elementary or even you know middle school and high school years where they really need to dig deep and master materials relating to science. But in the early ages, we just want to keep it fun and interesting. And I particularly like to keep things focused on God the Creator and, you know, emphasize that. So there are a couple ways you can use this resource. I'm going to show you one of the lessons in here and then give you some ideas on how you can use it, okay? So, like it says, there's 77 activities. So you could use this for, especially for those younger ages, as your main science curriculum and just do this. And if you did that, you could walk through, you know, one or two of the lessons and experiments a week. And if you do one lesson a week, it would last you two years, two school years. And if you just did two, then it would last you, you know, a little more than one year. Either one is fine. You could use it for um, Sunday school. If you're teaching Sunday school, you could use it to supplement whatever curriculum that you're currently using. There's lots of different things you can do with it. You could, if you were doing a formal, you know, or some other curriculum for science during the school year, you could pull this in as a fun summer study, or if you just need to take a break from your regular materials. I know for me, sometimes I just get a little antsy with <laughs> what we're doing, and so I can pause for a week or two and do something different, and this is a great way to do that or if your kids just need a little bit of a change up. All right, so in the book, you have you know, a typical table of contents and it, go, it, ta it gives you the title, like the creative title of each of the lessons or experiments and they're sort of useful. You won't always know what it's about. Um, let's see, so one of them is called an invisible army, for example. I have no idea what that is just by looking at it, but the one that says, swirling clouds, you know, I can get a better idea of what it is. So in, on the next page, they have a list of lesson themes and activities, list of lesson activities and themes, and it gives you a little bit more information. So it tells you what you are going to be um, exploring, like um, sound vibrations are made visible, and then it tells you which scripture you're going to use and um, the basic theme, which is music is a gift from God. So that is um, a better way to kind of skim through. If you were trying to match it up with something that you're currently using, you're just trying to supplement, you could skim through that list, find something that seems to fit what you're doing. You know, whether some of them are related to character or even habits. Um, most of them are related to, you know, a science phenomenon or whatever that they want to explore. But you can kind of glean from that list what the topic is and what the theme is and hook it into what you're doing. 
So I tend to be a little bit, you know, more relaxed with that. So you could either just, you know, ignore whether it hooks into what you're currently doing and just do one at a time in order throughout the homeschool year and you will still learn a lot and your homeschooling will be enriched. Or you can skim through, see if you can find something that matches. And if you can't, just pick something that looks interesting and doable for that week for you. All right, so let me show you an example. Let's see, I had one picked out but forgot to label it, so that's super helpful. <laughs> All right, I'll just pick one here. Okay, this one is the swirling clouds one. So the theme right here, it says the theme, it says God controls the weather. The Bible verse is Job 37, 13. He causes it, the weather details, to come whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. And it gives you the list of uh, materials that you need Almost all the materials in the book are things that you probably have on hand or can easily get. There's not a lot of complicated materials for most of these lessons. And most of them aren't terribly messy and most of them aren't dangerous. <laughs> so your kids will be able to participate. You will want to skim through before you, you know, are settling on a particular lesson for the week to make sure you have all the materials. But like this one just uses uh, clear drinking glasses, water and ink or food coloring. So we have that on hand. It starts with a Bible lesson, and one of the things I like about this is it puts the scripture and the Bible lesson first. So you read the scripture with them, you read through the Bible lesson with them. This is something you might wanna spend a little bit of time at yourself during quiet time sometime earlier that week, um, exploring more about maybe music in the Bible or about the particular passages they're focusing on or whatever, just so you have some more to add to the conversation. And if you're doing this weekly, you could use those scriptures as your memory work for your family if you want. So after the Bible lesson, it goes through the science activity and tells you how to do it. And this one is really easy. You're basically taking um, food coloring and dropping it into the glass of water and talking about how it illustrates the different, um, what, how do they put it? The different, uh, the unusual behavior of the moving dye illustrates the complex motion and mixing of air masses in the sky. So it just gives them a visual of the different air masses in the sky and how they mix together and sort of um, how that would look if they could actually see it with their eyes. And then it goes through the science explanation. It talks about, um, you know, the science principles behind it and it will talk about how it hooks in with the Bible. And at the end, they don't put this at the end, but I like to come back around to the Bible lesson that we just talked about and talk about how it all connects together and reinforce that scripture together and, and recite it together. So that is basically how these lessons work. They're pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Like I said, you could use this on its own as a preschool or kindergarten or first or even second grade if you're not quite settled on something. I personally don't worry about a formal science curriculum until older than that, but as a large family mom, you know, I have multiple levels. So the way I would hook this in is I tend to, we tend to do our science all together as a family. So we have our science lessons and we go through them. I would hook this in, you know, once a week or on a loop schedule or you're pulling it in as a fun activity and just pick something from there that either hooks into our science, you know, lesson for the week or that just looks fun and interesting. So during the summer, we do a lot more of these too because, you know, it's nicer outside and we can head outside to do the messier ones, which can be really nice. Um, so anyway, I highly recommend this book. You can find other books like this. This is just one that I stumbled upon a while ago and I really enjoy it. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions.